The What's Neat Show is sponsored by Lombard Hobbies, your value hobby shop for over 40 years of modelers helping modelers. Big inventory, value pricing, fast shipping, and great service. And by Bachman Trains. Now that's the way to run a railroad. Check out their website at bachmantrains.com. And by Roca Prototype Models. We make it real. Check out their website at www.rocamodels.com. And thank you for helping us support the best hobby in the world. This is What's Neat for March 2023. I'm your host, Ken Patterson, and this month we've got a great show in that it is part two of the series that we are running on layout construction. Last month you watched us build the shelf layout that will eventually get worked into a very larger size layout and be interchangeable with multiple types of different shelf layouts. This month we build some buildings and further work on the project. It's a great segment for what's neat. Also this month, Matt Stern from Bachman Industries comes over on Skype and shares with us all the latest new products that they're offering this year for 2023. It's really exciting that Via locomotive is absolutely beautiful. Be sure to check out the What's Neat This Week video podcast that we shoot every Saturday night showing what's new in our hobby, what's great, the special guests, a regular podcast crew, keeping you updated on this, the best hobby in the world. And so with that, let's continue on with the rest of this March 2023, What's Neat. Hello, this is Michael Gross, and you're watching What's Neat with Ken Patterson. saw to cut out the section of the wood where our panel switches are going to show. And I'm using this real slow and then I'm going to go back over the wood with a file and true up all the lines and just try to make this look nice. Now I'm using this piece of foam as an example of a new way that I like to add strength to all the dioramas that I do. I've got these pieces of wood that I've run through the bandsaw. I've got the router set up with a fence, and the fence is centered so that I can render a groove right down the center of the piece of foam to the correct depth of the blocks of wood. As you're gonna see in this upcoming clip, I'm what, uh, that you'll be able to watch where I'm actually routering the diorama itself to insert these blocks of wood into a nice routered groove, which then I'll use as a platform to staple the plywood sides onto and with this piece of wood being glued in with Gorilla Glue it's going to add a great deal of strength through the length of the diorama where when you attach the plywood it's not going to flex it's going to be a very strong diorama so that's I wanted to set you up for the next coming clip of routering so you'd understand where I'm going with this this is a great way now and I do it for all of my dioramas from now on whether they're two inches thick or six inches thick or 15 inches thick I've, I've done some big dioramas this way and it really works
I took some one by fours and I ran them through the band saw. And then I ran them through the circular saw and cut them up into small sections. And what I'm gonna do with these is I'm gonna wet these with water. I'm gonna put Gorilla Glue on, that polyurethane glue that is uh, the effect is started from the water reaction that it receives. And then these pieces of wood are gonna get pushed into the one inch or into the two inch foam, just like this. they will be nice and flush. And as the glue sets up, they'll be permanent in here. And what this will do is give me a surface to attach the plywood to. So the outside surrounding frame that's gonna keep this diorama from flexing will be permanently attached with staples to this wood. This is the way I prefer to do all of my dioramas. It works out very well, adds strength, and the sides will never pull off. I'm gonna stain the wood sides that you see right here with some red oak that'll match the uh, decor of the room and make everything look very nice. So I'm gonna paint this on before the wood's attached to the diorama. It'll be a much cleaner process that way. I'll be able to finish the wood completely with polyurethane and have these things looking just perfect before we attach them. Now what I'm doing is I'm putting in the wood that's going to help us attach our plywood sides to the diorama. And what I'm doing is I'm putting this polyurethane glue, this uh, Gorilla Glue, onto the uh, little pieces of wood that are going to go inside here. And I'm wetting everything. I'm spraying water in the groove and I'm putting water, the, the little pieces of wood are soaking in a bowl of water. So everything's wet because it's the water that causes this glue to react and get hard. It'll start to foam, it'll expand, it'll fill all the grooves behind the wood, and then it'll securely hold these little blocks of wood in. They'll never come out. And that's what we're gonna staple our wooden framing sides on that dress up the module and gives it a finished appearance. Just like that. After you get all the glue in, you've got to go back as it's starting to set up and just push the blocks of wood in with your fingers and just make sure that the expansion's not pushing the wood back out because it'll do that to a couple of them if you're not paying attention. And you've got to stay on top of this for the first 15 minutes while this chemical is setting up, while this Gorilla Glue is starting to cure with the water. The water is what causes this mixture of glue and water to react with each other and the polyurethane starts to foam and expand and that's what it's doing right now. And this is all gonna be set up in less than 30 minutes. So that's, that's kind of what's going on right now. running a Stanley Sureform planer along the edges to get out the foam that has expanded. two or three coats of polyurethane on the side of the wood to seal it and give it that beautiful shine, that beautiful finish of a piece of furniture. And this is going to look really nice here in about 25 or 30 minutes. Figure about two hours to three hours between dry time. So this is a complete uh, six to eight hour project. Just finishing off the sides and making them look nice. But it's well worth the time because you're going to spend years looking at this. So you want to do all this work now. Now that we've got our plywood done, let me show you how we're going to put this on. First, I want to make sure the diorama is on a completely flat and level surface, which I've got it on these nice pieces of wood here. Here's the piece of wood that we've got cut out. I've got it matched up to the side of the diorama. Test fit, everything looks good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come along here with some water now, and I'm going to wet everything 
all the wood here. And then I'm gonna come through with a, a, a row of Gorilla Glue, nice line of Gorilla Glue all the way along the moisture laden wood here. And I just wanna put enough on because this is gonna expand and ooze. I just wanna put on a little line, not too much so it doesn't come through the edges. Just like that. I'm using half inch crown staples with my electric stapler to attach everything. And this is really straightforward and very easy. It's just a matter of getting it right because you don't get a second chance to go back and do this part over if you mess up. Got everything lined up here just right. I'll go back and cover up these staples. Usually you would uh, put the staples in before you finish the wood, but in this case, I didn't want to mess up the edge of the scenery with stain. So I'm doing this sort of backwards. These crown staples don't leave that big of a footprint. So it's relatively easy to come back with a uh, pointed chisel, hammer them in a little deeper and then cover them up with wood putty. And so I'm gonna do this all the way around and that'll finish up this diorama other than the buildings and the top scenery and things like that. So I've installed the module now after we put in the track and got everything painted so I could test everything and make sure it works before I put in the blocks. One thing I don't like particularly about the area up here is because it's so high up and where the lighting is going to be here, it's kind of dark. So what I'm thinking about doing is putting in a valance. So what I want to do is build a valance that's going to be at an angle on the wall, not straight up and down, but sort of at an angle, and it'll have a light behind it, one of those nice rope lights. Uh, I'll experiment with LEDs down the road, but right now I've got some really cool incandescent rope light that I cut and made eight feet long. So here's what that rope light looks like, and I've got a piece of plywood here that I've cut, and I've got notched out the angle of where the I-beam of the basement is going to go. And my plan is to cut some triangles and angle this like this at an angle on the wall, on the ceiling, and attach it to the ceiling tiles with the small triangles. So I'll stain it, I'll paint it white on one side, stain it dark on the other, and put the rope light, attach it to it. And this should work out as a very functional eight foot long balance, or a valance for the little area up there that we've modeled. And here's how that valance came out after it was stained and I've attached it to the ceiling using, using the triangles by simply drawing drywall screws right up into the girders that are holding up the drop ceiling. So I didn't use the rope lights. I actually took them out. They weren't bright enough to do much. I need to get some LED rope lights and I can fish them through the holes here. It's painted white on the back, just like I said. And I did add a fluorescent shop light right up here at the top, which will give a lot of light onto the scene. But yet there's no light in your eyes when you're standing up on a stool and you're at the elevated height of where this diorama is. So, so far I'm really happy with the valance and the way this is coming out, the way it's just the way it's working. I might continue that balance all the way across the room as I take down pictures and add another shelf layout that would continue on with a mine at some point that would continue right off the back of the one that we're building right now.
Now let's talk about some of the structures that I'd like to put onto this diorama. You know when you get up to a top location on top of the hill, you're going to need a water tank because your locomotives are going to be thirsty. So I bought this uh, BTS small uh, water tank, and I'll tell you what, 15 minutes so far to build it. It's a lot easier than scratch building a trestle. Really simple. This, this kit will go together in about three hours. The only time that's real necessary is the time that it took to bend the outside wood. I had to soak it in water, make it wet, and then wrap it around the core discs that come with the kit. Easy enough, went together real nice. Once it's stained, I'll put it in a position next to the engine house, which is what I want to talk about. I might put a train station up on the diorama right here at the top of the hill and an excuse for having some industry, so a place to drop off cars with our tracks that we've got laid here. But something else I really wanted to do was build this engine house. So let's discuss next this BTS engine house on the video and how that went together. For this segment of video, I want to discuss the McCabe engine house from BTS Models. Now this is a laser cut single stall engine house kit. And what I'm doing on this project is just like I start all of my laser cut kits, I start by pre-coloring all of the parts. So here I've got the parts that are in the exterior painted dark, so I can use the rubber cement trick and make whatever color I paint them show as the darkness, the dark underwood uh, weathering shows through as we paint the paint peel off. The other parts are all stained, it's the outside walls and the roof parts. I always pre-color all of the pieces before I put it together. One additional thing I've done is I've got my diorama laid out here that I want to put this engine house on, and I took a piece of plexiglass and I cut out a base for the structure so it'll have a solid uh, single structure holding it all together between the uh, workshop and the main engine house. So I'll take my plexiglass base and I'll lay it in the bottom, and I've got my engine house floor all put together already. And so all I've got to do is simply assemble the outside walls and start to put in the windows and color treat everything. And this kit should go very quick. If it's anything like the other two stall narrow gauge roundhouse I just got done building, this thing should go together really quick. I mean, these laser cuts these days literally fall together like puzzles. It's just a matter of color treatment, weathering, and the finished product. And you can have one of these things built in under two weeks. So let me show you how this project carries on. Right now I'm cutting out the windows on the single stall engine house and I'm going to glue those to the side of the building around where the window, window frames would go. The, the single stall engine house went together very quickly. I mean, this is literally like one of those puzzles that you buy at the store and a wooden puzzle. It just falls together. So, so far so good on this. I built the outside walls, the plexiglass base. Everything sets into the diorama really nice. And the next thing I'm going to do is cut the wood joists for the roof and start assembling the roof. So that'll go very quickly. It should fall together in the next 20 minutes, and it won't be long that we'll be ready to start painting this building. Now I'm working on the roof on the engine house, and again, this is falling together like a puzzle. But the one helpful tip that I wanna bring up here is when I'm applying the glue, I've got the glue on this little metal weight right here, a blotch of glue that I just dump out of the bottle, and I use a dental pick to apply the glue to the model in the gaps, and in this case, in the roof gaps, where the pieces are gonna fit. And by doing it this way, you get just enough glue to hold the piece in place without making a great big mess with all the glue. And this thing, again, I, I keep saying this over and over again, I know that sounds redundant, but this thing is falling together like a puzzle. I'm using these blocks of steel that I've got. I've got a lot of pieces of steel I picked up at a garage sale one time. And I'm using these steel blocks to help square the roof pieces as they go on, just to make sure that the pieces are just right. But again, the roof is going together real nice right now. Everything is just falling together on this, on this kit so far. Now that I've got the main components of the single stall engine house built, it's time to paint this thing white. Now I've painted it dark first, so that when I apply rubber cement to this, and then put white paint on it and scrape it off, it'll give the effect of the dark weathered wood effect. So the first step in doing that, what I need to do, and this is probably the scariest part for any of us to get over, and that's after we've spent all of this time building this, we're now gonna absolutely cover this thing with rubber cement. I mean, we're gonna liberally apply this glue to the structure with the brush, the applicating brush that comes with it. And I want to put it all over this thing, very heavy. 
it'll dry thin, it'll thin out as it dries. So what looks heavy now will go flat and then we'll rub it off after it's painted white. So this is what I need to do to the whole building now is just simply liberally just make it look like I'm ruining it, but I'm really not because this effect is very effective, it works. No such thing as too much because it really, the more you've got, the more buildup you've got, the easier it'll be to rub it off and for it to be flaky and lumpy looking, which is what I want for the effect. So I'm just gonna go over this whole structure with this glue, just like this, all the way around. Gotta do the doors, all the parts where I want the paint peeling, I've gotta do that. drying very quick, it's almost disappearing here. I'm going to probably apply a second coat right there where it's drying so flat that it doesn't look like I've got any rubber cement to rub off. So don't be shy about putting this on. You're not gonna ruin the structure, I promise. Now that the rubber cement is dried, now we're gonna paint the single stall engine house. I'm gonna use about 20 pounds of air and I'm using some flocal lacquer based paint. I've still got some of that. We're just gonna spray this puppy white. We're gonna whitewash it. I'm not getting any paint on the inside of the building. I'm, this is a very good Iowata airbrush, which pinpoints where the paint is going. So I'm not really getting any paint on the inside, so there's no need to mask this right now painting around the windows. And I need to paint the doors the same way that I'm doing the engine house. And the doors also have got a good application of rubber cement on them so that we'll be able to make the peeling paint effect that'll match. Now in order to make the peeling paint effect, I've already started here, all I simply do is I take my thumb and I run it gently up the building up the boards parallel with the grain of wood. And I'm getting a real nice peeling effect here, as you can see. And I'm just gonna do this gently all the way around the whole structure, because this is working out really nice. Kind of randomly working my finger around this, because it's coming right off real nice. A little bit more pressure here. Yeah, that's looking. Paint's peeled off. The underneath weathered wood is showing through. Look at that. A lot of times, another thing I like to do is take a paintbrush. And just do one board at a time. And it gives you a subtle effect. Not as heavy as I'm getting with my finger, but what you want to be careful with the brush is you don't want streaks that look like lines. You don't want a pattern. You want a random effect. And when this is all done and this goes out into outdoor sunlight, this should look just fantastic. I've known some people take a little white paint or spray it over this just to make it a little more subtle which isn't a bad idea, that, that's helpful. Experiment a little bit, feel free to experiment. This is all a learning curve. We know what works, but we always discover something new through experimentation that suits our own uses in the hobby. So let me just finish this. I've got to do all these doors and all the parts and the eaves on the roof, and then we'll put the windows in. Now that the building's weathered, it's time to install the windows. And the windows are all laser cut. They've all got self-stick tape on them, which makes it really convenient to stick them to the acetate. And then I've been taking a knife and carving around the edges of each window section and cutting them out of the acetate. 
And then I take the two halves of the windows and I very carefully try to peel off that sticky tape and I press fit them together. And it creates a complete window frame with the upper sash. And then you take these other sections that I've got on the acetate, the smaller ones, and that's your upper and lower sash and they go together and everything seems to fit beautifully in the model. These parts are cut very accurately and everything just fits just as nice as it can be. So I'm just taking a little bit of wood glue, dabbing my dental pick in the glue, putting a little glue around the edges and press fitting the windows in place. So this won't take more than 20 minutes to have this finished. And then I'll, then I'll just put the roof on and it's pretty much, you know, doors and just final details and this puppy's done. And it's, it's a very nice kit, ready to be photographed outside. Beautiful day to shoot photographs today, and I brought out the single stall engine house. I built it without the roof, and I thought it'd be kind of fun to run a few trains on it and just see how it looks and how it's working. And so far, so good. I really like the way this building's come out. It's a nice diorama that's just perfect for the location it's built for. And just a little bit more finish work on the turntable and trees and maybe a few more buildings, and we'll have something really, really cool here. But that's, that's this diorama pretty much completed. Nothing's ever really completed as, as we all well know, but I've got a good start on this one and it'll take about two weeks to build what it is I've got here so far. And so with that, next month, we will continue this series on layout construction, whereas we start to finally build the larger layout, whereas the shelf layouts will fit into place. It turned out to be a really great finished product layout when it was done. So with that, that is this month's What's Neat for March 2023. For this segment of What's Neat, I've got Matt Stern all the way from beautiful Philadelphia, Pennsylvania at Bachman Industries to give us an update on some of the newest products this is something we always like to cover on What's Neat, keeping you informed as to what's new out there. And Bachman Industries is one of our leaders in the industry. So Matt Stern, how are you today? I'm doing very well, Ken. How are you? It's really nice to have you. So it looks like you got a lot of neat stuff to talk about today. I do. So uh, the first thing and the, probably the biggest thing to talk about is uh, by this point in March, um, our 2023 catalog is out and is uh, shipping to stores. So uh, we've had the online version out for about a month now, and uh, you can actually pick up a physical copy now. Um, this Ooh. is available at most hobby stores, and uh, it has all of our new stuff that we have, uh, as well as everything in our line that uh, has continued in production. Um, so if you want to find out about everything that we have, that's the place to look. The cover photo is beautiful, and that is this locomotive sitting on the table right now in front of us. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was photographed by, by a very talented individual. I'm not sure who they were, but... Uh... <laughs> It was cold and it was dark and it was a lot of fun to produce. Yeah, no, we we're, were very happy with the shot. It looks fantastic. So tell us, what have you got to show off today? So today I'm going to go through a few things that we have in the catalog. Um, we're very fortunate to actually already have some early samples for uh, a lot of the stuff that we just announced in this catalog just a few weeks ago. Um, and normally we're, we're not ready with samples at this point, so it's, it, we're pretty excited to show them off. Um, let's start with... Probably the coolest thing here, well, let's not say the coolest thing, but one of the <laughs> coolest things here is the, um, this is our new N-Scale uh, Altamont Corridor Express Charger. Okay. Um, we uh, just released the uh, the Amtrak versions of our uh, N-Scale Charger in December, and uh, they, they've been very popular. People have been really happy with them so far, which we're obviously very happy with. And uh, just like an HO scale, we're following suit with the uh, commuter schemes now. So we've got the... Uh, Altamont Corridor Express one here from California. Nice. And actually, they're both from California. We also have the uh, the coaster version um, from San Diego, which unfortunately we don't have a sample of yet, but uh, that one is coming as well. And uh, features all pretty much all the same uh, details and features as the HO scale models. The only difference um, that I'm aware of is we have one lighting functionality difference. Um, the uh, the number boards don't light up, and the only reason for that is just because of the size of the model. 
we have to choose between the number boards and the uh, the flashing beacons on the roof. And of course, we're going to choose the flashing lights. Right. Nice choice. Um, so a few more models that we have here, if we're sticking in N scale for now, we have two new additions to our Northeast Steel Caboose range. We have the Central Railroad of New Jersey, and then we have the uh, Conrail version here. Very nice. And uh, this is a, a line that um, has been around for a couple of years now, but uh, these are some brand new models we just announced in the catalog. And uh, I know a lot of Northeastern modelers are going to be very excited for these. And moving to HO scale, this is the big one. This is our Via Rail SCV42 charger. What a beautiful paint job. And this was announced, uh, as, as, you, as you know, this was announced last year, um, but we didn't have a sample. We didn't even have uh, artwork yet at that point. We just had the photo, um, which Via Rail very kindly let us use. And uh, now we have the model. This is a functioning sample. Um, it was at the uh, Amherst show. So if you were at the show, you might have had a chance to see it in person. And uh, yeah, we're really excited about this. It's, it's a fantastic looking paint scheme. Um, it's, it's just such a cool looking model. And um, one of the things that people said at the show, which I can echo personally, is it, it's so cool looking that even if you don't model Canada, it's, it's just one of those things you might have to have. Right. No, I agree. Will there at some point be freight or passenger cars to correlate with that? Yes. So in our NMRA announcements in uh, late 2022, we did announce that we are doing the venture cars to go with it. Um, we're doing the entire Via Rail consist. So that's, um, I don't have it written down offhand here, but I believe it's three coach cars. Might be two coach cars, a business car, and a uh, cab car. Perfect. And, and you're set up to do a train set. cab going to have functioning lights. Um, it's going to have some sound features. So it's not just going to be your run-of-the-mill passenger car. It's going to be as animated as it can get without having a motor. Nice. Nice. And then uh, we have a few more samples here. This is another one that came in uh, our 2022 catalog, but again, we didn't have a sample of at that point. Uh, this is our Reading Company GP40. This is a really nice addition to our GP40 range. This is a sound value model. So it comes with uh, uh, Soundtracks Economy Sound on board. Okay. Um, and uh, it'll just be a nice addition to uh, anyone's GP40 fleet. And uh, we have two new additions from 2023 for our steel coil car range. Now, these, uh, these, these cars... Uh, at the time of announcement, the first run hadn't even shipped yet, but there's been so much popularity, so much interest generated for them that um, we already felt it was time to introduce some more road names for it. Hey Amen. That's great. And just like the uh, the ones in the first release, these are going to come with, hopefully this has, <laughs> now, I hadn't looked under the hood yet. These don't have loads in them, but when you buy them in the store, they will have loads in them. So they have removable hoods and you can see inside there's the cradles for the loads. Um, it will come with six steel coil loads so you can fill the car up or you can run it empty and you can do a whole uh, loading yard scene and uh, it, it just makes the model a little more dynamic. No, it's beautiful. What a nice addition to the line. And then a few new box cars in HO scale that we have here. Um, we have two new additions to our uh, 50 foot outside brace range with the uh, flashing end of train device at the end. Nice. Uh, this is Berlin Mills Railway, and then we also have one here for uh, Montana Rail Link, which uh, I think is a cool addition, especially since, as many rail fans are probably aware, Montana Rail Link is uh, going back into being reabsorbed into the BNSF system, I believe, this year. Nice. Um, so this is a nice uh, kind of a it, it can be a nice tribute car for uh, for the railroad. No, that end of device is going to be really cool too. Absolutely. Um, we also have the. Uh, 40-foot track cleaning box car. We have two new paint schemes for this, and the one I have here is probably the cooler of the two. It's uh, the uh, Louisville and Nashville Impact Demo Car. Um, these cars, basically, they existed to uh, demonstrate what happens if a car is coupled at faster than the uh, the mandated four miles per hour. Okay. Um, they had open sides or clear sides, uh, so you could see inside it. They would load them full. <laughs> They'd smash them into the car next to them, and everybody watching could see all the boxes and everything go flying. And that um, car's so got done. boxes in it. So it has an insert in it. Um, so yep, so you can see the uh, you can you can see the boxes in there. And uh, what we've done on the car, just like in the real thing, is we've done a uh, see-through side with uh, an etched plating design on it. And uh, on this side here, we also have, which the real car had on one side too. We have the uh, speedometer there, which uh, on the real car would show you know how far how fast the car was going when it hit the cars that it was being coupled into. Wow, that's a lot of thought that went into that car. 
Absolutely, yeah. Um, and this is actually the uh, the third impact demo car that we've uh, that we've done in this line. We or we already did one for Union Pacific and for uh, Santa Fe, and the Santa Fe one is uh, currently uh, in stores now. Very cool. Plus, that thing does clean track well. Yes, absolutely. Um, and also in that same vein, we also have some new track cleaning gondolas. Uh, we have four new examples. This is using our uh, our forty foot gondola style, and uh, we have Penn Central here. Uh, let's see, we also have Delaware and Hudson. We have Union Pacific in the Silver Maintenance of Way scheme. Very nice. And we have a North Pole and Southern Christmas one. So if you have a Christmas railroad, if you're only running HO scale trains at Christmas, you now have a track cleaning car that'll work with your railroad. Perfect. And let's see, we also have uh, one new addition here to our uh, HO scale Northeastern Caboose. We, we had two that were uh, announced in the catalog, but I only have one sample here, and this is the uh, New Haven style. Okay. The uh, McGinnis scheme. And uh, this one's pretty cool. It's uh, got white ends. Uh, some of the cars have black ends. There are a few that have white ends, and it just makes for a little bit more of a striking design. Nice, nice, Matt. And uh, that's about it for uh, new samples now. Um, Something I've got behind me here is the uh, City Sprinter set. This is something that also started shipping at the end of last year. Um, this comes with an ACS 64 locomotive. Um, it doesn't come with sound or DCC, but it uh, comes ready to upgrade with sound and DCC. It's got the speaker already installed, and we actually just announced in our catalog uh, we have a, a DC, DCC sound upgrade kit you can buy for it. That's great. That's fantastic, and that's a great train set to have. Oh, absolutely. And it also comes with our new concrete tie track, which is worth mentioning. That track is beautiful. No, the, the Bachman Easy Track, hands down, is just reliable. It works. And the concrete track additions have been great in the last year and a half to two years. Absolutely fantastic. This is the best time, I say, to be in the hobby because of all the amazing models that we now have at our fingertips. And it's no exception to the neat stuff that you guys produce out there in Philadelphia. So, Matt, is that about it for this show? That's about it. I mean, I could go on. We have plenty of other things uh, in this catalog. Uh, we don't have samples for all of them, but um, I think it's best to say at this point, if you want to find out more, get one of our catalogs. Amen. That's a great, great catalog. There's a lot of stuff in there. The Thomas line, so many different scales. Just, it's amazing the variety that you guys, all those skews and numbers you have to keep track of. Absolutely. All right. So with that, that is this segment for What's Neat. Thank you very much, Matt Stern, for being with us today. All right, thanks for having me. Fantastic. All of the products seen on this episode of What's Neat are available from Lombard Hobbies in Lombard, Illinois, or order online at LombardHobby.com. Bachman Trains. Now that's the way to run a railroad. Check out their website at BachmanTrains.com. And buy Roca Prototype Models. We make it real. Check out their website at www.rocamodels.com.